Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you this lovely morning in paradise? As the sun floods in through the window, I have an interesting day ahead of me. One of my nurses is doing a marathon in about a month's time. So we're doing a fundraiser for her tonight in the Innovation Center. So there'll be about 50 people there. And guess who they've asked to be the quiz master? Big mistake, huge. The last time I did a quiz was for the parents, my daughter's parents teachers association and uh, I think they had 10 teams and the winning team got 38 out of 100. So I had slightly overestimated the intelligence of the average member of the public. <laughs> so, oh dear, so no more questions about the adiabatic lapse rate. But uh, you know, lots of, uh, lots of questions like what's the name of the longest bone in your leg, etc. and things like that. So, they probably won't even get that, but, you know, what can you do? What can you do? This is, I mean, you know, this is, everything is relevant to dentistry, everything. I mean, to what extent can you avoid imposing your own personal beliefs and culture on, on everyone else, you know? How do I know how intelligent everyone else is? How do I design a quiz that's not the best quiz to me, but is the best quiz to them? Uh, and it's the same with dentistry, isn't it? How do you solve a problem that in a way which is not what you think is the best solution, but what the patients think is the best solution? And should you, and should you even b try and do that, you know? Anyway, quiz time is about 7.30, so I'm only working this morning, it's a Friday. I'm only working this morning, I'm gonna come back uh, later, I'm gonna bring in a PA system, I've got a little self-contained PA which they're gonna borrow. And uh, hopefully I won't be droning on from you know on my own for two hours. They're going to do a little raffle, and we've got a joker so they can play double points and everything. And uh, oh, it's going to be a bit, a good bit of fun, you know, and, and uh, raise a few hundred pound for uh, charity, charity, charity. So uh, yeah, pop reference there, smashy and nicey. You see? Did you pick that up? Anyway, I was up until one o'clock this morning doing the questions, so, uh, I mean, at that point, you, you lose track of how good or bad they are, do you know what I mean? You're just like, I mean, <clears throat> funnily enough, there's a hundred questions and I started about nine o'clock and I'm actually surprised that it only took me four hours. That's about two and a half minutes a question. So, um, <clears throat> and these quiz sites, you know, I paid 10 pound to go on a professional quiz site thinking, oh, I'll just uh, download you know, an entire pub quiz, but um, they're useless. I mean, they really are. I mean, they're for professional quizzers. Do you know what I mean? They're like, the sort of people that are coming along tonight, they're gonna be drinking wine and they're gonna want a bit of fun and they'll want, they'll want all sorts of questions about Scooby-Doo and things like that, not what the country has got uh, green, yellow and black on its flag. So, <clears throat> okay, so, Anyway, I'll let you know how it, got, it went on. Something else interesting that happened to me yesterday was that uh, LBC rang me up and asked me to go on the Nick Ferrari show. Um, that's quite funny because, I mean, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, listen to that show. And, uh, you're, you know, I quite frequently when I'm on the show, I get phone calls from people in London saying, oh, I, you know, I was amazed. I was listening to the radio this morning and you, you came on the radio. Like you don't know, you know, like I just, I, I thought I'd, like, I'd tell you that you were on the radio. <laughs> oh, was I really? Oh yeah, what did I say? <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, it went really well, it went really well. They wanted to comment on a Daily Mail uh, story about um, how toothpaste don't prevent erosion. Abrasion, abrasion, they don't prevent abrasion. And I think, you know, in the same way as I got it, I got it mixed up because they got it mixed up. And I'm trying to remember how they got it mixed up. But uh, basically, they said that uh, uh, toothpaste are useless at preventing your teeth wearing away, um, which is a bit like saying that, um, you know, your hedge trimmer is, um, your hedge trimmer is uh, useless at stopping your lawn growing. So, 
Anyway, and I use that analogy. I think analogies are always. I wouldn't overuse analogies, but I think people need to understand what I thought the problem was with that. They're not going to be interested in the difference between erosion, abrasion, and nutrition, are they, over their breakfast? So, uh, and then we started talking. And then he, and then he said to me, "What made you get into dentistry?" You know. So I told him. And then uh, we had a chat about disclosing tablets, and really, actually, went on. I mean, it went really well. I must try and get a recording of it. Um, I think LBC, you have to pay. Uh, they don't do like a general availability podcast. Well, I might see uh, if I can download it today. They've had, they would have had enough time to have uploaded it. Uh, yeah, so that was good fun. So. The way that the general format, how it goes with these uh, media, is that um, they generally they, they have your number, yes. So what happens is at some point they will do a bit of research and try and look for someone's number. Uh, so they'll 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 want a dentist for something, and so they'll sort of make a few inquiries, and somebody might give your name and your phone number because they're saying that you're a bit gobby, you know, and you spat off about your renter gob about certain stuff. So they'll give you a ring and then have a chat and then <clears throat> that, quite often they don't like you and that's it, you know. Or more frequently if it's like an establishment, a media outlet like the BBC, they'll they'll have a chat with you and get your point of view and then but they won't ever talk to anyone outside the establishment so they'll just, you know, I mean you can do all the groundwork, you can break a story, you can do all the research and then they'll go to the BDA for a comment, you know. Uh, so <clears throat> that's a bit uh, soul destroying, but uh, once you're in their diary, then you're pretty sweet, you know. I mean, they will then they might not ring you for months, like they hadn't rung me for months. And the last time I went on, um, it was about the general anaesthetic thing where um, you know, kids are going, going into GAs to have their teeth out, and we talked about tooth decay in children and I said how it's you know it's entirely preventable and I'm not because I'm not very happy with with the the parents of the children who who cause this sort of problem and uh, went on some rant about this uh, woman who came in who got her children on a vegetarian diet consisting of maple syrup and uh, wondered why all the teeth were decayed you know, just the general stupidity of parents and how they really shouldn't be in charge of children. And then, and that didn't go so well, you know, it doesn't go down so well. So um, I thought they probably wouldn't ring me back after that. But then, you know, fair enough, they rang me back and they'll, even if they've got other sources, they'll ring you back, you know, just for a change, you know, a bit of variety. And obviously it helps if you're good on the radio, you know, if you're fairly, um, fluent and good at, uh, you know, <laughs> not like that. If you're, if you're good at like assembling your ideas, making them logical, talking to the audience at a level which they'll understand, and then most importantly, pausing, you know, because there are several sort of mistakes that are very easy to make on radio. One is to lack confidence, and I suffer with that a lot. I used to, you know. It's like, uh, not anymore, when things are going well, I'm not saying I don't, ne- I never do a bad interview, but you know, you have to, um, you have to sort of forget that you're talking to hundreds of thousands of people, possibly millions of people. It is very difficult to forget that. It is very difficult to lose that sort of, oh my God, I'm on the radio type adrenaline rush that you get, you know? But if it ever happens to you, and certainly the other thing is that you you can lose your train of thought. You know, your mind is racing so fast that you can uh, literally forget where you were. You know, you can go off on a slight di- even a slight diversion, and just and then find you're completely off the path, and that you're in the forest and you don't know which way to go. Um, what I do when I know I'm doing one of these things <clears throat> is I immediately get a sheet of A4 paper and I just scribble down the general ideas, you know, the what what was the question, what do they want to know, key words like abrasion, attrition, erosion, uh, key uh, messages I'm trying to get across, like uh, 
abrasion, uh, you know, attrition is tooth, where you're grinding your teeth, and abrasion is where you're, you're brushing your teeth, and erosion is mainly caused by orange juice, and possibly, you know, drinking orange juice diluted with water is a good idea. Um, the presenter's name, and that's important because uh, you might be on the Nick Ferrari show, but Nick Ferrari might be on holiday. So you might be talking to Fred Bloggs. And while, you know, most people, I mean, I would recognize Nick Ferrari, you know, you might be talking to Radio Birmingham or something. And you might not know their regular presenter. And so you might think that you're on the such and such a show and you might say, yeah, hello, uh, Joe. And it might not be Joe, it might be Fred. So ask them, they'll ask you lots of questions. What well, basically what they'll want to get straight is your name and your title. And even then they'll get it wrong because uh, yesterday the researcher said, uh, you know, your you know, your dentist in Ramsgate, and I said yes. And when uh, I got on air, the on air producer, who's a different guy, said, uh, I understand you're from uh, Hackney. And I said, no, no, <laughs> I'm from Ramsgate. And he said, oh, oh, okay, don't know what happened there then. But the rest of it is, let me just run the rest of it past you. That is correct, isn't it? And I said, yes, that's true. So, <clears throat> so, um, ask them questions, you know, like, uh, I mean, you can, you can pretty well guarantee that the interview is going to last, I don't know, anything, uh, two, five, ten minutes, something like that. Nothing too terrible. And then, um, also, uh, <clears throat> try not to say, um, too much, you know. I mean, it's very difficult to avoid that. Get yourself a glass of water, always. Even though your mouth won't be dry when you think about getting a glass of water, it will be dry when you start the interview. Get, blow your nose, right? Have a tissue and a glass of water ready for, before you start the interview. Um, obviously find somewhere quiet, um, you know, upstairs in a bedroom or something if you're in the house. And, uh, and then obviously sort of just the other, the other great radio technique, which I think they appreciate, is that you have to have, there has to be a, sort of an end to what you're saying. You know, this is not a conversation, this is a, a radio interview. And so they'll ask you a question and you'll reply, and then you have to, you have to bring your answer to a, you have to close it up, you know, after about 20 or 30 seconds or so and and say you know and wait and pause and then the interviewer will jump in again because it's his job to jump in and make sure that there's no silence so don't worry that he won't know he won't have anything to say uh, the, the problem is that you know you, you, you sort of tend to stretch it out being thinking I'm on the radio I'm on the radio and uh, if I finish then he's gonna say oh well you know thank you very much goodbye and you don't are subliminal you sort of subconsciously you don't want that to happen uh, you want to you want to be on the radio so what happens is you tend to sort of just add another sentence to the end of everything and, and stretch it out a bit or say the same thing twice and that's you know you've got to trust that what you're saying is interesting enough and then other times they'll just cancel I mean I remember I was on the radio the day, day Andy Williams died and they just said oh, I'm sorry we're not you know sorry for taking the time off work we're not going to use you uh, and that's it really, it's not that complicated, you know, be aware of the fact that uh, people will be listening and if you do say something really dumb, then the GDC will, will turn up on your door. That's very unlikely, but, you know, or the BDA will uh, start, will bring, bring your stupidity to uh, the attention of others. Um, everything you say is on the record and so if you're not happy speaking on the record or you don't really know what's dangerous to say and what isn't dangerous to say you know I mean I can't I can't go on the radio and, and he say look you know um, I've never heard of disclosing tablets why why uh, you know have I never been told this and and I can't say well oh it's just the way that the National Health Service dentistry is set up it's a terrible system that teaches children to brush their teeth when they're four years old and then never never does any prevention from that day onwards. I mean, that that is a dumb thing to say. And um, and you might think, well, you know, but why? It's the truth, you know. I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm just saying 
why why when you say something that might be dumb to say you might think to yourself well it's true but it's not you know it can be true and a dumb thing to say at the same time so just you know just be careful if you're going to volunteer for this sort of work just be careful all right don't get yourself into trouble start off with local radio work your way up <laughs> oh dear yeah so it went really well and i think he, he was genuinely curious about oral health and you know he was asking some good questions so in the same way as lots of patients who come in you know and you finally you tell them that uh, they can throw their electric toothbrush out the window and uh, and need to use disclosing tablets which they've never ever heard of and um, uh, you know that they're genuinely curious as well so he asked a lot of really really good questions and I think I got a great a great oral health message across in that interview you know some in in a sort of a very very easily digestible sort of bite-sized piece which people are just going to take in in the background you know and and going to reach a ton of people who don't normally, you know, come to my surgery. Let's put it that way, and don't don't get the old Mr. Angry guide to uh, keeping your teeth into old age. So um, that's it, really. So uh, quiz tonight, LBC yesterday. Who knows? Who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what tomorrow will bring? What tomorrow might bring a massive heart attack? Who knows? Actually, I shouldn't say that because my uncle started going on about his mortality and then a year later he was dead from cancer. So it sort of comes back to haunt you, you know. But they'll, in a couple of years' time, people will be playing this video and saying, you know, old angry, little did he know. Little did, how prescient was that? Perhaps he knew something. Perhaps he knew, perhaps he, you know, perhaps he sensed. Or perhaps animals know when they're going to die. <laughs> I have no intention of dying. Believe me, I'm going to be around for a good time yet. Long enough to torture all you lot for a few more years. I'm going to fill up YouTube if it kills me. Well, yeah, well, you know what I mean. So, wish me luck with the quiz tonight. Oh, 100 questions, 7.30 start. It's going to be, it's got to be 30 seconds of question, isn't it? So that's 50 minutes, but they can't go right through. So lay half an hour break in the middle. 80 minutes, hour and a half, that's going to take us through to nearly 10. By the time we do the quiz, the raffle, and the scoring, oh my god, I've done too many questions. Never mind. I can always leave a round out. I can always leave out, I could leave out the uh, dentistry round, or I could leave out the Bitcoin round. We'll see. No, I won't leave out the Bitcoin round. I'll leave out the dentistry round. <laughs> Ah, uh, my life is too good. Do you know that? My life is too good. I'm having so much fun. Here we go. Here we come into Alcatraz. My surgery location. <clears throat> First of all, they turn the police stations into prisons. Put a security fencing around them all and now they've done the same to the schools. This is like coming into Ford Open Prison, this. I'm not surprised we don't get much foot traffic. Anyway, we survived. Actually, that's all we do. But I don't care. Oh, I've been in the job 35 years now. And as I said to the select committee of the House of Commons, the first 100,000 fillings are the most interesting. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. Bye.